What's going on, family? So, yeah, we, we just haven't stopped. We just, you know, Saturdays and Sundays going to be days off from uh, loading. Then we're going to hit you with the realness Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. Central. And uh, yeah, I've been working on other things because you guys know I do ride a bike right. But, yeah, so we, we got a lot to go in. And uh, I'm going to chime in pre pretty much after every every other video. So, because YouTube's being weird. They still haven't responded to my um, appeal request and they haven't watched the video I uploaded showing that because it's unlisted. But I'll keep you up to date as things go on, right? So, so right now, this is Sunday, October 6th, and I'm putting this video out that I'm recording this, and this video will drop the next day on the 7th, all right? So much love and be one. I think it's time for y'all to admit that the reason that the Black American identity isn't valid to most of you and you question us when we tell you we're from America is because the country we claim to be from is not majority Black. Mm -hmm. I said what I said and I meant it. Because Haitians, Dominicans, and Jamaicans also came to their countries via the slave trade. But when you ask a Jamaican where they're from and they say Jamaica, you say okay. When you ask a Haitian where they're from and they say Haiti, you say okay. When you ask a Dominican where they're from and they say the Dominican Republic, you say okay. But when a black American says I'm from America, you go know where are you really from? And the reason that is, is because our blackness isn't valid to you because the country we're from isn't majority black. And I know it must be jealousy because the fact that Black Americans are in a country where the majority doesn't look like us and we still manage to grow and thrive and build things for ourselves it must make some of y'all sick. It must make you sick. But at the end of the day, that's not my problem. I am black, I'm American. I came here via the slave trade and I'm proud to be an American, sometimes. Bro, man, it's given, it, it really is, man. It's given like these niggas as agents, bro. Why are y'all popping up with podcasts and y'all just can't keep our name out your mouth? And the, I don't like the part when she was like, when dude was like, y'all be calling us Akatas. And we keep on telling y'all stop calling us Akatas and stuff like that. Y'all y'all can't say nothing because y'all be calling us Akatas. She's like, Akatas just means African-American. I'm an Akata. Bitch, no the fuck it doesn't. It means the same thing it translates into a wild animal or a wild cat. Right? If, if I go to Catalina and I'm like, what's good, Catalina? And she's like, puta madre, que pasó, pendejo? And I'm like, Catalina, bro, why, what the fuck did I do? Why are you calling me pendejo? Oh, no worry, papi. Pendejo means, pendejo means you're smart. And I'm like, Catalina, no, the fuck it doesn't. If I go to Damien, and I'm like, what's good, Damien? And Damien's like, wa guan, brother. Wa guan, ras clot, pussy clot, cheat your boy. I'm like, Damien, excuse the fuck out of me? He's like, no worries, uh, Raj Clot, Pussy Clot, Chichi Boy means respect. Damien, no the fuck it doesn't. Right? If I go to my people, I talk to Keisha, and I'm like, what's good, Keisha? It's your fine ass. And she's like, what's good, coon ass nigga? And I'm like, Kiki, what the fuck? He's like, nigga... Coon just me, coon just me, you know what I'm saying? You get bitches. Why you always crying about shit? Kiki, no the fuck it doesn't, right? If I talk to a white girl, I'm like, what's good, Emily? And she's like, what's up? <laughs> she's like, what's up, you fucking chode? I'm like, Emily, what the fuck, bitch? Who the fuck is you calling a chode? She's like, a cho just means you're handsome. Don't worry about it. It's like, no, no the fuck it doesn't, Emily. Y'all really think we're fucking uncultured just because you're not the center, center culture in a country that you can just weasel through saying crazy shit. So when you call us Akata, bitch, and we say to stop calling us Akata, fucking stop. So this video is for all the raccoons in my uh, community. I want you to remember that if you ended up on a t-shirt today, these same people that you're seeking validation from are going to be the same ones justifying why that palm colored person put you six feet under. See, y'all get so fucking bold and you get on TikTok and you start justifying the murders of our people to seek validation from these palm colored folks. But you must have forgot that these same people will switch up on you in a second. And listen, my biggest thing is I understand that your black mother did not love you and your black father abandoned you and every black woman that you came across did not fuck with you. But at the end of the day, that does not give you the right to disrespect your own community and seek validation from these same people who will happily put you six feet under. You must have forgot what your skin tone looked like. 
You must have forgot that they're going to tell you to go back to your country the second that you say something they don't like. You must have forgot that if you got pulled over by a police officer, you're reaching to get your registration, that that's the end of your fucking story. Y'all are so fucking delusional thinking that this shit won't happen to you because you got a whole bunch of palm-colored racist-ass people on this app agreeing with you. It blows my fucking mind that y'all think that shit is acceptable. And then when you're calling them out for the raccoon that they are, it doesn't bother them. But the second that you put an at or a face to it, you make an entire video, you getting a whole bunch of views. It don't bother them, but the second that you put a face to what you're talking about, here they go getting their entire coon clan to come after you. It's really embarrassing. Are you not embarrassed? It's just funny that you're so delusional on the internet, but I promise you, you go out into the real world and let you be in one of these situations, you're going to be crying for the black community's help. Baby, get some fucking therapy. Quick PSA. If you got a problem with being black, if you got a problem with being called black, if you have a problem with being African and being called African, if you have a problem with our ancestors being black or African, if you have a problem with the fact that the people that you want to identify as come from Africans, if you have a problem with any of these things, I don't give a flying fuck how you want to identify. Just keep that self-hatred, punk-ass, sell-out, divisive-ass disease away from my page. It's real simple. I don't give a damn about your identity crisis. I ain't coming to your pages talking to you or trying to convince you to identify as something else that you're not. You take your self-hating asses off my page if you got a problem with anything I just said. All you doing is making all the racists happy. Bunch of stupid motherfuckers tell me, oh, I'm not African, I'm, I'm, I'm Indian. I'm the motherfucker, the Indians come from African, so it don't fucking matter. I don't care. I don't care about your little hurt feelings. I don't care about your identity crisis. Get your ass off my page. Have a wonderful day. Damn! As you can see, family, we are collectively speaking out en masse. E N. M-A-S-S-E, right? And I love it. I love it because we're, we're, the disrespect though, it's, it's the disrespect, especially knowing that all these cats, oh, we came over with $2, $3. You came over here and they plugged you into our system, took our tax dollars and put 10, 20 grand into you. Erased your credit, right? So you had no negative credit items on your, your credit at all. And boosted you up using our money. And then turned around and told us, well, we got nothing for you. We're not praying no more. We're not praying and hoping and wishing and, and loving and hugging. None of that. We are standing on business, standing 10 toes down on FBA lineage, on FBA business. We're tired of the other disrespect that we are receiving and we are speaking out. We're challenging these these Democrats. We're challenging the shields. We're pulling up to rallies. We're pulling up to events. And we are letting it be made known we're not going to take this anymore. And I love every bit of it, family. So keep going. I know some of us feeling like, are we going to stay 10 toes down? All right, we're winning because we're staying on code, codified, and we're not fleeing. Be one. And that's why it's a competition with mm. African American women and African women. Y'all want to know why nobody was taking these content creators serious when they were speaking on Marcellus Williams? Because, gang, they was watching y'all. They been watching y'all for years. Y'all get on this app all the time and disrespect black men. Now, all of a sudden, y'all care about an innocent black man that's on death row. They want to take y'all ass serious. And why should they? The same people that standing up for Marcellus Williams are the same people that was calling black men bullet bags. Are the same people that was making fun of Kevin Samuels when he lost his life. Are the same people that agreed with those black women that went on that clubhouse interview and said that they get turned on when they see police officers unalive black men. They knew y'all was being performative. Hell, I knew y'all was being performative. Y'all only brought that man up because y'all was trying to get paid off y'all TikTok videos. Y'all didn't really care if that man made it through or not. That's it, that's all. 
Y'all ass are frauds. Just like that president that y'all want to see get in the White House. Now, I ain't going to say no names because I don't want y'all in y'all feelings. Incorrect. The tethers. That's who were denigrating and disrespecting black men. We had a few bed winches here and there. Not that best of crew. But that's mostly comprised of tethered women. Black women love black men. Black men love black women. We may not always agree our bad behaviors and actions, but we love one another. Most of us would like look, we, we may mess around with the other group. You know, we might dabble, you know. But to lock be in lockstep with and have children with and be on that piece of paper with, we want black. Particularly foundational black American. And you saw two compilations go that once that she told that brother who was I think it was from Senegal or somewhere, you're too African. I need you to be a little bit more black American. That's what she wanted. We are the pinnacle. I always have been and always will be. I don't know why mainstream news and social media is not covering this more, but Hurricane Helena devastated certain parts of Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee. Some of your friends, family, and faves that live in those areas are not okay. Some people are still currently without power, without clean water, without a way to contact their relatives and their family to let them know they're okay, without food. People can't even get to the foods because the roads are destroyed, y'all. Hurricane Helene hit the part of Georgia where I live hard, and I was left without power, hot water, and cell phone service for four days. My land is flooded in certain areas. My crops are destroyed. My tents were pushed over and self-sustained water damage. There's trees down everywhere. My neighbors had trees fall on their houses and their garages. Kids and families died just a few minutes away from me. Me and my family are safe and the devastation that we face is nowhere compared to the devastation that is currently going on right now in North Carolina, specifically parts of Western North Carolina in Asheville and surrounding cities. These cities were underwater. There were houses floating away in the street. People lost their homes. People lost their businesses. People lost everything. Liz, this morning I'm dead ass pissed the fuck off. As a recent hurricane survivor, as somebody who been without lights for six days, I am pissed off the fact that I can hear Joe Biden say, we need American people to come together to, to help the recent hurricane survivors. Why the fuck we got to come together to help ourselves? We didn't have to come together when y'all sent $30 billion to the Ukraine. Yes, I can speak on this. Yes, I'm experiencing it myself. So y'all can't say a damn thing about it. Then y'all love to touch on the fact and say something about Heritage, I mean, Project 2025. But guess what? The trustee of the Heritage uh, Foundation, which is the foundation that presented Project 2025, why they endorsing, why they endorsing um, Kamala now? Why they endorsing Kamala now? And she not for the people, and y'all can't see that. I see it more than ever now. I see it more than ever. They don't give a fuck about us. Prayers go out to this brother and his family in their time of need. I'm going to try to keep this brief. One, Ukraine actually does not know what the $30 billion is that we sent them. So they're baffled about the, the, the alleged $30 billion that we donated because they still need help. Two, um... You have to apply for $750 in aid. Three, Joe Biden wants his fellow American to donate instead of, you know, speaking out and not only having all Americans donate, but also his very, very lucrative, rich business buddies to donate. Four, the Democrats are not for you. This administration really has done nothing. The only thing they're clinging on to is the fact that they are for abortion, which is crazy because they only push abortion to the black areas because and none of their white stops were their abortion buses, just the Atlanta stops, just the heavily black populated stops. Five, if Trump was as bad as he as y'all think that he was, he would just be like, you know what? I'm not the president. I don't have any reason to donate. He started a GoFundMe so that his fan base, the fan base that everyone hates so much to donate and actually do something instead of just having you apply when you don't have internet, electricity, water, food, probably not even a car, but you know, if you find a way, you can go apply and probably get that $750. I said I was going to keep it brief, but that's about it.
So now they're saying FEMA doesn't have enough funding to last through hurricane season. Wyoming is on fire. Do y'all know that? Do y'all know that Wyoming, like go look it up. Wyoming is on fire. They haven't even talked about the biochemical explosion in Conyers since it happened. We don't know what's going on in Asheville. All these towns are cut off. The death toll is still rising. Meanwhile, people at Chick-fil-A worried about Diddy. This world is so colorful and chaotic. And I know it's like social media is the reason why we're over consuming the chaos, but it's also the reason why we don't know anything that's really going on. Let's not even get into international news and all the bombings and what's going on with Israel. But social media is the reason why we don't even know what's going on because there's so much going on. Wyoming has over 25,000 acres on fire right now. It's seven in the morning. I'm gonna go take care of my baby, but this is crazy. For the news you didn't know you needed today. I love you, bye. See, this is what happens when you cut off your nose to spite your face. You think, well, we're gonna keep practicing benign neglect and the Negroes are just gonna have to deal with it. They're just gonna have to, I got that God, the God off laugh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, see, I, I put the greens in the bathtub. <laughs> okay, okay. When you do things like this, Mr. You're not black if you don't vote for me. You never know what happens in the world. You can't, well, we can go in the heart, but we're not going to do that here. The way the weather works, there's a reason why there's a hurricane season, a tornado season, earthquakes. You eventually would not be able to plan for the unexpected. And what happens is you have these situations where you try to neglect your citizens, particularly foundational black Americans, and it bites you in your rear end. And that's what's going on. This is the perfect storm. This is good. And Jason, say, and Jason Black would say, this is good. This is good. Folk need to wake up. And some of us won't wake up until we get punched in the face. Unfortunately, this is the proverbial punch in the face. I'm here for it. So under my Jaguar right post, I got a lot of comments about the fact that she's probably telling the truth because nobody has sued her yet. So I got legal advice from my favorite attorney, my father who practiced criminal law for over 35 years. And from the perspective of an attorney, he was like, there's no valid reason as to why anybody would sue Jaguar right. One of the reasons being is that it costs money to sue someone. And Jaguar Wright seemingly doesn't have any assets that would benefit Jay-Z or Beyonce or Diddy or anybody that would be suing her. In addition to that, it would also cost money to serve her a cease and desist, which seemingly does nothing for all the things that she has already said. We've seen in the situation with Cardi B and Tasha K that even though Cardi B sued Tasha K and won, Tasha K had no assets or no money to actually pay the money that she owes Cardi B. And in being sued, she still hasn't stopped running her mouth. And according to my father, from both a legal and a PR perspective, suing someone like Jaguar Wright and other folks like her only bring validity to her statements if it does not affect the person's bottom line. So if it actually affected their livelihood, their ticket sales, merchandise sales, business interactions, investment, then and only then would it make financial sense for those folks to sue Jaguar Wright. So I found out this morning that the strike, the port strike is over with, but uh, uh when y'all gonna talk about the uh, screaming children? Like, how y'all just gonna act like them folks didn't come out and say that it was screaming children in, 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 in them damn shipping containers? Like, I <laughs> see, this is how you know the higher ups got something to do with this. The government and everything got something to do with, with, with all of this stuff that is going on, and they... <laughs> Like, so y'all just gonna go back to work like nothing happened. You know, I, I just saw a video of a man saying that his biggest concern wasn't about the money, the raise, none of that. It, 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 wasn't, about, it wasn't about the automation. It was about those screaming children in those uh, containers. Now, of course, they're not gonna show proof because they want to keep it covered up. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this. Do y'all think it was just a big cover up or do you think it's something deeper? Like what 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 do y'all think?
Now, I've seen on TikTok where people say something about the kids screaming and all that stuff. I don't know for sure. Nobody shared any videos. Even if it was doctor, even if it was like AI, there's nothing to to make me, you know, kind of de dwell deeper into that. Would I be surprised if that was happening, though? We see they got Diddy, but all these other palm-colored individuals, they're not speaking about them. He wasn't doing that by himself. Uh, he was having free calls where he was doing what he was doing, but all the degenerate activities in, um, in, in general, just Hollywood, that's why we call it highly weird. We call it highly weird for a reason. That's because all the weird stuff they've going on, all the men dressed up, put on dresses, and they'd be on Hollywood Boulevard and dudes be picking them up. All that weird stuff going on. We hear all these stories about uh, women having to go and be in these offices and they come out, you know, the offices, they did what they did and they try to forget it out. I don't know for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised because this is America. You Darius Blake. Sure. Mr. Blake, you're charged with possession of marijuana. You're facing up to six months in jail and or a $2,000 fine. We are going to do probable cause. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can or will be used against you. You have the right to have an attorney present. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to you, sir. Okay. On September 4th, 2024, officers were dispatched to a possession of marijuana investigation at 100 Hollows Tree Lane in Harris County, Texas. Officer was informed the defendant crossed an authorized crossing point from convenience store to apartment complex. Officer observed strong odor of marijuana. Wait, wait. He did what? He said he crossed an unauthorized crossing point. So I guess he crossed the street. Is he jaywalking? Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. And then walking while black. And it said the officer observed a strong odor of marijuana, and he was informed that the defendant had begun to walk backwards upon being asked about marijuana by another officer. A PC search was conducted, and the officer observed a large sack of marijuana. I don't think so. Walking while them. black. I don't think so. I'm going to find no probable cause. Yes, Mr. Blake, be careful, man. Yes, you know, the world is against you. Don't let him be. Do something with your life. You know what I mean? The more you just come on, man. All right. I'm going to have you just take a seat and back. All right. Hang tight. This is the result of banging the drum, stomping the yard. Screaming from the Raptors, pull ups, yelling, staying on code, and just not giving up. That's what that is. Right? As I'm playing it and listening to it all the way through again, if we weren't doing what we're doing, the whole walking while black, driving while black, all that, that was us. This is what happens when you have a, a continuous barrage of us not taking the BS, us not bending over, us not putting our heads down, us not just, well, you know, there ain't nothing we could do. We, we eschewing all of those individuals out of the mix, the delineation, the calling out our coons, the calling out the divestor, shade by the Twitter, all that stuff over years, the culmination of all that is what leads to judges doing this and saying, what? Because see, that wasn't popular. It was, well, he's a Negro. Whatever you say he did, you're a white cop, you're a white prosecutor, I'm white, we're all white. Man, they some raisins. And this is us saying, no, we're not going to take that. We're going to call out injustice. If we wouldn't have done what we done with Philando Castile, George Floyd, our brother Amari, um, oh, I forgot that brother's name, down there in Georgia, from the Northwest to the northeast, to the southwest of the southeast, and everywhere in between. If we weren't stomping the yard the way we were, th this wouldn't have happened. And mind you, I'm in Texas. Our sister Sandra Bland died in Texas because of mishandling of justice by suspected white supremacists. We wouldn't have got this if we wouldn't have stepped up and just, I'm I'm so proud of us. I I I don't. Oh, <sighs> if you would have said it would have been like this 15, 20 years ago, you would have been called crazy. I'm glad we don't have to call that.